This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. I think Invasion of Ixalan is pretty good. It doesn't help add to the board, but it's cheap enough that it's kind of okay that it doesn't. Seraph of New Capenna is pretty good. Um, beyond that, this pack's not great. Gargantua's okay. Quende's okay. I think we'll take the Invasion. I don't think Eryxmethes is very good in Limited. Just too slow. Um, you know, the, the mana it gives you isn't good. isn't enough, really. Um, in Limited most of the time to be worth it. I mean, if, if this format turns out to have more of a ramp angle, it'll be better. But I'm not super impressed with the card so invasion of xerex another pretty good battle obviously it doesn't go with the green card we took uh astral wingspan's pretty good these green cards you know the herd beast is okay but yeah um yeah so we're looking at like invasion of xerex or astral wingspan i think mostly i mean tidal terrors in there too <clears throat> Yeah, I think I'll take another battle. So Kahira, not really a companion that you can actually do that much with in this format. Uh, we do have Mutagen Connoisseur, Invasion of Olgratha, which is a pretty good battle. Um, Chomping Cob, who's not bad. Mutagen Connoisseur. I think Freewheeler is great. And probably just the best card in this pack. Yeah. Okay, so here's an Emoti, which makes me want to be in blue-green a little bit. Uh, Invasion of Ragatha is pretty good. Deadly Derision's quite good. I think we'll probably take Derision. Yeah, I mean, Emoti's strong, but I'm not convinced we're going to be in blue-green, and I just took a really good black card, and I'm going to follow that up with a really good black card. Okay, I love Alabaster Host Intercessor. I think that's probably our pick here. I'm curious to see how good this ends up being. Um... I sort of feel like it takes a little too much work to be worth it in, like, every deck. But, you know, it's it's pretty good in a lot of decks. Um, Order of the Alabaster, Order of the Mirror is pretty good as well. But I think we'll take Alabaster Host Intercessor. Big Fiend Hunter with Plane Cycling. All right, Seal from Existence pick six is kind of late, so <laughs> pretty happy to take that. I mean, it's that strong that seeing it pick six is a little bit surprising to me. Must mean white's fairly open. All right, some decent white stuff here. The Dune Shaper, Aeronaut. Um, Invasion of Pyrulia. Like most of them is pretty nice. Most of the cheap ones are the ones that add to the board, basically, are good, and it's one of them. Um, I probably just take a green card here. I mean a white card. And I like the Dune Shaper enough. Do I like Aeronaut a little more? Maybe I do. Yeah, let's take the Aeronaut. So, Overgrown Pest isn't bad. It gets better if we have enough double-faced things. Consuming Aetherborn, not a bad creature. Decent green creature down here. So, yeah, I mean, I think we probably take Aetherborn. We just have more black cards, and I do think these two black cards are, you know, comparable to Invasion of Ixalan. So, we'll take Consuming Aetherborn here. Traumatic Revelation and a Gainland. I think I'm going to take Gainland. Fixing seems good. It's kind of annoying that when you draft it, you unlock it, and then you have to select the, select the art, art style. Okay, so pretty good blue card is still here in Astral Wingspan. Um, Bonded Herd Beast is nice. And I, th I think the Herd Beast is probably the pick just because we have Invasion of Ixalan. Um, 
that's basically the, the tiebreaker. I'm a little surprised Mutagen Connoisseur is still here. I've seen a lot of signposts so far in this format today, like just wheeling around. Um, we're not great at making use of it at this point. Poor tent tracker's okay. Man, Emoti is still here. Well, we're gonna take that. Do people just not want to read this because it's so uh, weird looking? <laughs> Five mana, three one that cascades is basically a card you always play, and then it has a little bit of upside. Okay, so we will take a traumatic revelation now. Poor Rada. You know, she was so good in her own format and so bad in this one. <laughs> well, another breach the multiverse. I mean, we had a pretty good experience with it last time, and <laughs> I think we're taking it again. And with Portent Tracker, we can even ramp into it if we end up in black green. I do like Invasion of Lorwyn. Maybe it wheels, but yeah, we'll take we'll take another breach. I do like Scornblade Berserker. I like Invasion of Kamigawa, too. Um, Etched Familiar is a nice thing to have around. Yeah, Invasion of Kamigawa is tempting, but I'm probably just going to take a good black card in Scornblade Berserker. Like, if I had more blue going on, I'd probably take the Invasion, but... This one mana zero one that puts counters on things. We could have used it in our last deck, actually, because we didn't have good sacrifice fodder. Okay, so Final Flourish is pretty good. There's also another Alabaster Host Intercessor, though. I'd probably just go there. It's a pretty great thing to hit off of Breach the Multiverse, and it puts itself in the graveyard anyway. And it's just a really good card to begin with. So it feels to me like we're probably black-white. Then we get Inga and Isaka. All right. So, Invasion of Lorwyn is quite good, I think. Um, but, do I think I'm black green or black white? I mean, white seems better to me at this point. It's close, though. It's close. Um, so, I could take another Intercessor, but either Blade Agents are really good two drop, and when we transform it, it's a huge problem. Um,. Yep, I think we'll go with the Agent. Okay, so... This has me wishing a little bit I was in green-white, because Botanical Brawler is pretty strong. Probably just take Elspeth's Smite. I think it's probably better than Cut Short. Alright, we'll take a Golden Scale Aeronaut. Good green cards were in that pack. I don't know. Should I still be thinking about green pretty hard? Because you can play host intercessors off a of splash, basically. It, it, you need another reason to be splashing. Losing seal from existence would be our biggest problem, but we do have good things in green. Um, yeah, I mean, this pack doesn't really have anything for what we're currently trying to do, but it has a couple good green cards in it. So I think I'd probably grab one of them. Guess we should still have these in here because I'm not super convinced I'm doing the right thing now. Running green does give us the potential to ramp into Breach, too, which is cool. Wow. Okay. I'm pretty happy to get a Seraph of Nuka Pena here. Um, you know, I was just wondering, should I be in green? And then we get this. So, I mean, we, yeah, be in green or be in white. Hmm. Well, we're going to take a green card here. It is a playable one, even though I do feel like it's a little less likely we're in green. It's not like either of these green cards are incredible. 
guess I'll take Halo Hopper. I mean, it's playable if I'm desperate. Okay, Thornwood Falls. That helps us a little with stuff like Emoti. Um, Icker Shade's okay, but... Well, it doesn't if we're not playing green, actually. So I think we do take either Icker Shade or Battle Fan. I think we'll go with the Shade. And we'll go ahead... Well, maybe we just want Flywheel Racer. Yeah, we'll take the Racer. Yeah, I mean, green seems more open, but the quality of cards overall seems higher in, like, white... Ooh, Obosh. That's interesting. Um, so Quintorius is really interesting too. But yeah, I feel like... So we could splash Quintorius potentially into a red-white deck. Um, Black-white deck, I mean. So, you know, we do have Flywheel Racer. Uh, but Obosh is also just really good. And I don't think we're going to try to play it as a companion, but... I think we have enough odd-numbered damage sources that it's going to come down and augment the board a lot. Quintorius, I would need to pick up some more fixing or we can't really play it. Um, I do think Quintorius is probably better than Obosh as, if Obosh isn't your companion. Um, so, you know. Oh. <laughs> okay. I didn't realize I clicked on a different thing. We've In the last draft, it was the client's fault that I picked the wrong card. In this one, it was mine. Could be worse, though. Quintorius is, in fact, good. <laughs> anyway, um, where do we want to go from here? Merciless repurposing is expensive, but effective removal. Unsealed the Necropolis is good at rebuying things. Drag Recycler is a fine two-drop. I mean, I will play Quintorius if I get the fixing, so there's that, but I do like having an unseal in my black decks. But I think maybe we just want the repurposing. There's another one of those. How many knights do we have? Not any. So Shalfir and Lancer doesn't look particularly good. Neither does Sword Sworn Cavalier. Swiftwater Cliffs doesn't really fix our mana. So now we'll take an Unseal, I think. Okay, Dune Shapers. Solid. So is Knight of New Coalition. Um, still no fixing that helps us cast Quintorius. Yeah, we can't really cut all of our twos and fours <laughs> to make uh, Obosh our... our uh... Well, we didn't get him anyway, so what am I talking about? Uh, yeah, so we'll take Dune Shaper here. There's Invasion of Lorwyn. It is more realistic for us to splash Invasion of Lorwyn than it is other things, so I think we'll take it. Vanquish the Weak, Invasion of Eldraine. Yeah, this is one I'm not thrilled about. Costs, it's not cheap, and it doesn't impact the board, and that, I don't love that. So I think I take Vanquish. I do like Angelic Intervention, but I think we'll take Removal over it. Okay, so I think we'll take Enduring Bond Warden. Be cool if uh, we just got to wheel the um, Obosh anyway. Don't think it's going to happen, though. Dismal Backwater doesn't help us with what we're currently trying to do. I guess I'll grab it, though. But yeah, I mean, we could try to splash Invasion of Lorwyn. What do we have? We have Flywheel Racer. It's probably not quite enough. I guess we'll take another one of these. This draft doesn't feel like it's gone nearly as well as our last one did, unfortunately. But the deck's not terrible. <laughs> All right, so Jalfir and Lancer it is. It's mostly just going to be a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three in our deck, but hey. Why are you pilots and not knights? You're a samurai. There's 
it's kind of wild to me that we managed, you know, there's so many knights in this set, and I think we've only got the one, which is crazy. Scroll Shift or Tranquil Cove. We could have had a lot of cards that helped us splash blue, <laughs> but we didn't really want to. I guess Invasion of Xerix isn't terrible uh, to splash. It's not awesome. But we we could try. We could think about it. It is a knight <laughs> when it transforms. Yeah, the question is whether our curves too high. So far, I haven't really felt like this format's crazy fast. I mean, I've had a game or two that were, but... Yeah, I don't think I did the greatest job navigating things. Yeah, so I have... Splashing um, Invasion of Xerix is easier because we have Tranquil Cove and Dismal Backwater. I might do it. It is good. Um, and it's good no matter when you play it. Flywheel Racer can help me with the mana there too. I would have liked, you know, a random skittering surveyor or something to feel a little better about our mana, but... Yeah, so I don't think we splash Invasion of Lorwyn. I think with one land, it's probably not good enough. Um, I think with two lands plus Flywheel Racer, Invasion of Xerax makes some more sense. I don't really... Do I want to run a basic island? I kind of don't feel like I need to. Because I'm not... If I had a surveyor, obviously I would, but I don't. So, yeah. Double black or double white? I mean, uh, which do I have more of? Yeah. Nine black sources, eight white sources. I think this works. Well, we need to cut a couple cards, but then it'll work. Um, we're not that good at sacrificing. Oh yeah, Jalfir and Lancer is a three mana three three. Is that just worse than all our other three drops? Probably. We have one knight that will pump it, um, and that's not really enough. So yeah, I think we'd rather have these other things. Dramatic Revelation's not great. probably our other cut our curve is pretty high but the intercessors make it look higher than it is that's another reason to run more swamps than plains all right not nearly as crazy as our first deck was but you know our first deck ended up underperforming a bit so maybe this one will overperform Okay, well, <laughs> kind of a funny hand in terms of everything, but it is a keep. I mean, it's hard not to keep when you have all of your colors of mana. Um, yeah, it is kind of a five land hand. <laughs> Has a little more flexibility than a five land hand, but... Yeah, I am a little worried about our curve just being a little too high. Um, even with, you know, the intercessors, you know, aren't really high, but they, they kind of are. So let's play Flywheel Racer here. This I left in the deck, by the way, as well, because it can help us ramp into our stuff. Yeah, that's less than ideal, and we can't do anything about it right now. We're going to end the turn. We will be able to deride it in the future. It's going to hit us for four first. Okay. Um. Yeah, I guess we're going to go ahead and plain cycle one of these. Makes me think it's pretty likely they have some form of interaction to save their cavalier um 
I think we probably passed the turn. I could cast this and then play Dune Keeper, which Dune Shaper, which then means I can crew my racer, which is a thing. But if I cast Derision, I can also cast the other Intercessor next turn. So I think we're just going to pass. We're not under so much pressure that I feel the need to do something else. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I could play the Shaper. You're right. I could have played the Shaper and used it for the fourth mana. You are correct. You are correct. Alright, so let's try to kill this. See how that goes. With that many cards in their hand, I can't imagine it goes super well. <laughs> yeah. That's that's what I thought. And I don't even get the treasure. Okay. I think it's better to play... I can play out both of these. And... Uh leave up flywheel racers so i think i will i can cast unseal at least so far not going very well though obviously <laughs> okay well now that has first strike. Um, do I just take seven? Yeah, I guess I do. Then I'm going to crew this. Cast Unsealed in Acropolis. See if that helps me at all. Um. I kind of feel like if I'm going to win, I'm going to have to hit a land and then play both Intercessors. So I think I'm going to grab one of them and the Freewheeler. Well, that's not a land, but it's not bad. Put a counter on the life linker and end our turn. See if they play another knight here. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting that I can crew and play the intercessor. That's <laughs> it's going to take some getting used to. This this land my brain this uh vehicle doesn't work with my brain. I think what we did ends up being fine, but yeah. I think playing the intercessor is probably the better play. I mean, I do have a tapped 3-2 and then a tapped 1-2 in that world, but they have one fewer creature. So it's... It's interesting. They must not have a knight, because I think if they had one... Oh, no, they do. Why did you take so long, man? <laughs> you not only have a knight, you have the one that taps something. Which makes it even more impossible for me to defend myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I guess I'm going to chump. Take three.
Go down to, so I'm at two. Playing an intercessor doesn't really keep me alive. I'm gonna do it anyway, but. Yeah, we're dead. They just have to swing out. That game, our deck felt awful. So <laughs> we'll see if uh, if that continues. Like we felt completely helpless in every way, overmatched. And that can happen, you know, and it turns out your deck's pretty good, but this one has some problems. <laughs> okay I mean with flywheel racer I think this hand's keepable could go really sideways on us of course So I might be able to play Invasion of Xerax next turn, depending on, you know, how things pan out here. Another one of these, huh? Um, is that still what I want to do? I can't attack it right away, which makes it a lot less appealing. But I do have the mana for it now. Yeah. I think we'll go for it. Make them replay their turn. So we can transform this into something that's big enough to just attack the invasion and kill it here, potentially. Um, interesting. So it's tempting here to... Tra try to transform this and just attack Invasion of Xerox. There is the one blue mana spell that they might be able to use to... Um, to, uh... words. The, to, to bounce it to my hand. And that would hurt. But I think I'm going to go for it anyway. I mean, that's a great deal for us. So, <laughs> like, them blocking that way, like, works for me. Apparently they've had enough. So if they play something that can block here, I can probably hit it with the Intercessor and transform this, which I think is worth doing. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> that makes that harder. So, you have Defender, yeah, so we'll just put the counter on the Aeronaut. <laughs> I 
<laughs> okay. Well, not really a reason to play our intercessor. So we're just going to pass all the stasis fields. They're pretty good in situations where you have nothing else going on, but eventually it's probably going to be annoying for our opponent that we can, you know, block everything. So I think we probably transform this. While we're at it. They might respond, but that's okay. Ooh, yeah, that's something I would like to vanquish. The downside of uh, tapping out. Stasis field number three. That'd be hilarious. Interesting. Makes me want to hit the Cavalier with Vanquish here. We'll see. Okay, so now we can cast Deadly Derision and Vanquish. Seems like what I'm supposed to do. I can then hold on to the Intercessor for later. Yeah. Then I attack this draw card and get a big flyer. Yeah. So deadly derision on Sentinel. Vanquish the weak on Sword Sworn Cavalier. Transform this. Draw a card. Feels pretty good. So it's not like crazy likely they have things they can cast off the top, but I mean, they, they might. <laughs> They're gonna attack me, huh? I mean, I think... Ah! <laughs> okay. The downside for them is that I can then play this, bounce it, attack it, draw a card again, which I think is a pretty good... Oh, actually, I can't, because I shut off my mana. That is... That is wrong. Okay. So let's attack them and draw a card. And... Play my Seraph. Or play the Intercessor. Or play Golden Scale Aeronaut. I think probably play Intercessor. This game, our deck doesn't feel completely helpless, at least. <laughs> Not completely. Mostly because we got, like, all the removal we could ever want. Um, so... Do I just cast Seal from Existence on this thing, or... I mean, yeah, that's probably... That's probably best. There are a few other things I could have tried, but... Alright, so we'll play our Seraph. That's pretty much lethal next turn. Okay, so we have nine mana. You're four to transform, you're five to cast. Oh, wait, we only have eight mana. So I can't quite transform you. That's okay. So let's play Golden Scale Aeronaut. I'm going to put the counter on the Mind Stinger. Attack with both of these. Oh, and that. So even if they kill the Intercessor at instant speed and get this back or something, which they don't. Um, well, that's a little annoying. 
All right. Well, we won one. Deck felt much more functional that time. We just, you know, played removal and creatures. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mikalino. One, 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 one. That's right. Got all our mana. We do need two white for seal, but... Well, be easy for us to get it now. So they have Umori. That means their deck is probably all creatures, which is always interesting information to have because um, they're companioning Umori. Man, should have played the Tranquil Cove because <laughs> then I could have played the Enduring Bond Warden here. Okay. All sorceries would be a twist, wouldn't it? So we are going to plane cycle one of these here. So we probably seal from existence him because making all of their... Uh, oh, I guess I didn't really have to do it anymore. I mean, it's probably still what I'm supposed to do, but... Making all the cards in their hand cost less is probably not great for us. So we are going to seal from existence, Umori. And there aren't that many cards they could have that can destroy this. I guess there's that 3-4 dinosaur, but they can't have any non-creature spells that can destroy it because of their companion requirement. Okay, you've got Izuri. Luckily, I just top decked to Vanquish the Weak. <laughs> Good game. <laughs> Just because I killed your two really exciting cards. <laughs> I don't know if it's good game yet. Like, all I have in play is a 1-2. All battles would be hilarious. Botanical Brawler. <clears throat> so yeah there's like the three four dinosaur who can have haste or destroy an enchantment what else is there I'm trying to rack my brain here so here or not I could just play an intercessor here I think Aeronaut's pretty good. Well, this can get out of hand. But I'll still be able to deal with it, even if it does get out of hand. So let's play Aeronaut here. Yeah, even the dino, it would take it a very long time to actually destroy it, it's true. Yeah, that's a good combo from the bonus sheet. So, not one that I'm worried enough about, though. I think I'm just going to play... Hmm, what 
do I have any really good two drops? No. Neither do we. So free wheeler, I mean it's okay, but I think we're just gonna keep holding on to Intercessor and play Aetherborn here. I'm holding on to Alabaster Host Intercessor for something more problematic. I can actually get the other one back at some point, too, with Unseal. I could get them both back, potentially, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Okay, so they're going to drain, drain some life here. Yeah, that's... Dina Soulsteeper is doing some work. <laughs> I'm probably going to have to actually kill something. Wow, I just keep drawing Aeronauts, though. And they're pretty good here. Um, but yeah, I mean, I should probably kill... Daxos. Like, he's... Well, they have other ways to gain life, but Daxos is the biggest problem. So... I think that's the route I'm going to go here. I guess I attack first. So, they don't have a whole lot of cards since they did Omori um, to kill Alabaster Host Intercessor either. They can't even run tricks, so we don't need to worry about those. Yeah, Dina does have an effect that lets her sack something to gain a bunch of stats. A bunch of power in particular. So I can't really block her. <laughs> but they also have to give up significant. Although, Icker Drinker can give them some value out of the graveyard. So kind of works out. I mean, I think we block. Even if things go really sideways here, it's not the end of the world, but because of what their deck is, there aren't that many ways that they can do anything. Yeah. They're going to transform that, I'm guessing. Okay, um, three, four, five, six, seven. So I can play Freewheeler and Unseal. Um, it's probably what I'm gonna do. Yeah, it'd be interesting if they have some uh, expensive Praetors in their deck. Let's mill a bunch of cards and find out. No Praetors there. I'd probably unseal at the end of their turn and grab... I mean, it's not the most exciting, but the Intercessor's pretty good. Uh, Intercessor and Icker Shade. Yeah, I don't think I don't think making Omori a companion is worth it in the anymore. It was worth it when you didn't have to pay three mana. But you you have to now, so. Okay, so that's much better. So we get Intercessor and Seraph back. Um 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I think I'm actually gonna play Golden Scale Aeronaut. Give. Yeah, they're scooping. <laughs> I was gonna say, kind of doesn't matter where I put it, but. <clears throat> All right, we're two and one now. Okay, I mean, our high curve is definitely hurting us, but, you know, I can say as much as I want that the intercessors, you know, they, uh, I cycle, I cycle them away early, but it's like, you know, <laughs> still keep getting them in my opening hand. Ooh, that's bad. Um, interesting. So let's cycle this away. Play. I mean, I could try to leave mana up in case they decide to transform it this turn and hit it with Elspeth's Smite. But I think that's a really bad idea. Because in the situation where they don't transform it, I'm way behind on board. So. It does look like they're going to. But they probably wouldn't have if I had mana untapped. I think it's safe to say. That ward, man. Whose idea was to give that thing word? Um, so let's attack. So if they don't have a spell, I could try to kill it with Elspeth Smite. Um, <laughs> it's not super likely they don't have one, though. And Alabaster Host Intercessor is going to be way too slow. I almost feel like I have to give it a try. They do have to have an instant. So, you know, let's go for it. <laughs> if this doesn't work, we probably lose, but... It doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, we probably lose now. Uh, we can kill it with this. That might do what we needed to. Yeah, that's that's not good. Um okay, well. I'm trying to come back from behind here. Couldn't really block that because it would pump itself and whatnot, so. Um, I think Aetherblade Agent's going to be better at getting them to stop attacking me. did um i think we play aeronaut and just put the counter on itself i just don't have the time to try and like transform this i have to build up my board so they can't kill me so although it's getting tempting um, all right, so we're gonna attack them with Golden Scale Aeronaut. Then I think we play the other one and put it puts its counter on itself. Hmm. 
We do have a pretty good clock right now. They have a, several cards in their hand and a lot of mana, though. Yeah, that's annoying. So they can transform this and kill something. The only thing they can kill is our Ether Blade Agent, but killing our Ether Blade Agent is pretty good. Doesn't mean, you know, they still can't attack this turn, but. So let's unseal. And get back Ether Blade Agent and I think an Intercessor. Yeah, I think I'm going to attack them for six here. So it does feel like we might turn the tide. We certainly just didn't just get crushed. I thought for sure after Elspeth smite we we would, but we managed to pull out pull that one out. And that's what's supposed to happen in formats. You're supposed to be able to play like cards that give you two for ones in value that cost a bunch of mana, and they're supposed to pull you even with your opponent, you know? So Yeah, top decking the seal right after that catastrophe was certainly <laughs> certainly lucky too. You know, that that helps. Yeah, it doesn't seem as breakneck. I mean, I've been able to come back from behind a few times. Ugh, once again, our curve is, is not very good, but I think we probably keep this. I mean, I could mulligan since this hand is completely helpless. Yeah, we're supposed to mulligan. This is much better. I'm glad I did. I'm considering putting Intercessor back, but I don't know. Um, maybe it's just Icker Shade. I mean, it's not like it's that great. Yeah, let's put Icker Shade back. The Intercessors are pretty sweet. We've been able to cycle them away and then get them back, um, which has proven to be pretty good. Hmm. I don't love that they just played a captive weird. Um, which of these one mana creatures do I want to play first? Both of them are going to be kind of useless. I could even just play this land first. It's not the worst plan because it's not like they're going to do anything against a 1-3. Yeah, let's just play our land. I would love to kill this before it transforms, but that is easier said than done. Though they didn't transform it there. Playing the Surveyor is pretty good. Okay, we can kill it before it transforms. I like it. Get out of here. I could wait until they do it. It's not the worst plan. But it also risks interaction being a bigger factor, so I'm just gonna go ahead and kill it now. All right, so there's some sort of multicolored silly deck. Probably, do you think they have Battle of Alara? Probably. Well, they grabbed another swamp, so it doesn't seem like they're going too crazy with their mana. So let's play Berserker. And then Dune Shaper. I definitely block one of the surveyors if they attack me. There's not that much that can go wrong. <laughs> so 
So I don't have anything else to do, so it feels like I'm probably supposed to transform one of these. Problem is, there's a very good chance that they can remove the one that I transform, and I think that means I'd rather they kill this. So let's go for it. Yeah, I was going to say, and if they couldn't, then, you know... I'm probably going to get rid of this Berserker after a chump block here, just to dig a little deeper. Halo Forager, whoa. Uh -oh. They're going to cast my Vanquish the Weak. Or their Vanquish the Weak. They have a couple options. <laughs> See you later, Etherblade Agent. It's also not really something I want to use my um, Intercessor on because it's in the battlefield ability. So, you know, that's far from ideal. Man. Well... I guess I'm just going to have to do this. Like I said, I don't love doing it. But I don't have a whole lot of choice. I could have waited things out more, I guess. That's like the only option. Because I think they are going to kill it. The good news is they don't have any good spells to cast off the ETB this time. So if they do kill this, they get a 3-1 back. Which isn't awesome, but it's nothing to the world either. Well, that's not good. Well, I think we're in trouble here. I mean, it could be worse. Oh, that's actually a really good draw. Don't tell me you have counter magic. What they might have is removal, I guess, for Alabaster Host Intercessor. Instant speed removal here would be very sad. Um, I guess any removal will do it, but... And they have it. <laughs> of course they do. All right, so they get that back. And I don't know how we come back. They kill Freewheeler. Uh, attack us for seven. I guess we could cast our big um, spell, the Breach the Multiverse. That would give us a tiny chance. <laughs> That's not going to do it. Um, all right. It does mean we survive one more turn, but... But by the time it becomes our turn again, even if we draw Breach, I don't think... I don't think we could survive. Hello, Velux. It's going pretty good. Nope. Yep, that felt like another game where we didn't really ever do anything. <laughs> yeah, I guess the thing with Breach is you never know what you might mill. <laughs> like, if they have some insane bomb in their deck and you can just, like, steal it, sometimes it can take you back from anything. So that's the fun part about Breach. Right, 
Looks solid. So I wonder if they play a battle here and attack the battle. Doesn't look like it. Yeah, that's not good. I can't immediately deal with her. Um, okay. I guess we'll leave up Elspeth's smite and hope they attack with Ayara. But I also have a death toucher in place, so I'm not sure why they would attack. <laughs> I think I'd probably block Frontliner. Maybe they try to use the indestructibility trick or something. And yeah, I mean, that, that ends up working out okay. And if it's a trade, I don't really hate that, so. Hmm. Yeah, all right. So, Vision of Xerox, Bounce Ayara. Yeah, Elish Norn would have been a bigger deal than Elspeth in that situation. <laughs> oh, good. I can kill the gorilla when it... No, I can't. I don't have any mana. Yeah, I mean, I just feel like in terms of how much mana the average card in our deck costs, we just went too high. Um, you know, the Intercessors have done a pretty good job of helping us uh, get back in the game, but... You know, we're just too far behind, and yeah, removal, just the tempo hit is, is too much. Um, I wonder what I'm going to hit with Intercessor. Because that's a really big problem. Ayara transforming is a really big problem. <laughs> um... Yeah. Well, I think we hit a Yara in the end. Another removal spell. Hmm. Well, I don't think we block. Not when I don't have mana up. Okay. Well, now I do have mana up. Um, it's probably better to play out a body here. Yeah, then we'll pass. I guess if I gave this five toughness, there's fewer things that can kill it. Okay. We're gonna block this. And I guess I'm also... Should have put the counter here, probably. Because chumping and drawing is probably the best thing that card can do for me. Okay, so they didn't kick it. That works out pretty well for us. Hmm. 
Another one of those, huh? Yeah, that's not great. Yeah, I mean, I think this deck overperformed to go three and three, frankly, and I think uh, the earlier deck underperformed to go four and three. <laughs> like, just seems like this deck has too many problems. All right, we're going to block one of you. See if they try to use a trick. If they're... Okay, well, that's not a trick. Do I kill one of these things? Almost feels like I should kill the flyer because, you know, I can't block it. So we'll do that. Yeah, that's really good. I wish I had mine. <laughs> they milled mine. <laughs> and then, then we drew a land, of course. Well, don't know how we don't lose now. We do get to gain a little bit of life. Hmm. Am I supposed to attack the invasion of Xerox here? Um, kind of think I am. Because if I do that, yeah, this becomes what a four or five. Yeah, we can we can take that hit. They may block to kill this, but I think that works out okay with me. Like, because that freewheeler was going to be a huge problem <laughs> between transforming and uh, such. We do still have Breach the Multiverse somewhere in our deck. Hasn't been milled yet. Ooh, they got us with Invasion of Ragatha. Yeah. Yeah, that'll happen. <laughs> Yeah, this deck wasn't good. Um, curve was too high. I mean, we had some nice removal and stuff, but we definitely pushed things a little too far with uh, the kind of curve I decided to go with, which I do feel like I actually learned something from, unlike our first draft, because, you know, in this draft we got to play more games. So 